What's up, weirdo? Shade Tree Surgeon here, and I've got an admission to make. I have a problem with Hondas. Well, I'll tell you boys, the STD 1100, a damn sight easier to put on the lift than the Raspberry Buffet, and hopefully it's gonna need a lot less work. The Raspberry Buffet was a $2,000 bike that carried me across the country. This is a $750 bike that hopefully I only have to do one thing to before it's ready to take me on a trip. I bought this bike on Tuesday, it's now Friday. I'm planning on leaving Sunday morning. So I ain't even changing the oil, baby. I'm just gonna check the fluids, uh, see if I can't install a switch to make the fan turn on, and we're hitting the road. I've been working on Gold Wings long enough to know now that with most Honda Touring bikes, step one to doing anything from checking the tire pressure to changing the engine out is remove the seat. So I remove the seat on this and make it really easy. You just got a key and a handle over here. And the first thing I'm gonna do before I even mess around with the fan switch, I mean, I know the fan's not coming on. I'm gonna go ahead and just see what the coolant level is like. Seat's gotta come off, panel on the other side's gotta come off. I don't know if there's anything else besides this one screw and uh, I see a zip tie up here. <laughs> so definitely gotta cut the zip tie. Cool. All right, that's not super hard. Hey, look at that. No broken tips, whatever you call these things. That is just like the bane of Honda Touring motorcycles. Well, it looks like I've got plenty of coolant in here, so let's move on to that cooling fan switch. All right, well, it seems like if I remove this panel, I'm gonna get at what looks like, I don't know if it's the switch, but it, is, it looks like it is. <laughs> hmm, that comes out pretty easy. Seems to me <clears throat> that if I just connect the temperature switch, and that should make the fan come on, but we'll see. Well, I don't know which one is negative, so we're just gonna go ahead and guess here. I would assume it would have two wires. What kind of switch is this? I think it only has one though. What, what's happening here? Definitely only has one wire. All right, I think I got it figured out. The problem was when I was trying to diagnose this temp sensor, I was basically assuming that it got power, like when it got hot, like it made a connection and I don't know, I was just assuming something wrong. But what I should have, been, after a little bit of research online, I found out that when that temp sensor comes on, it actually grounds it. So even though I was providing power to the fan, the fan didn't have a ground because the ground goes through the temp sensor. So once I connected that temp sensor to the ground on the battery and turned the key on, we got a fan, baby. All right, that means I can indeed put a switch on this. All right, let's see if that gives me a fan. It do, baby. All right, I got a working fan. I've checked the oil. Uh, I guess I better check the tire pressure too. Balling on a budget, baby. I think this thing's ready for a trip less than a week after I paid $750 for it. And the only thing I spent money on was a $5 switch off of Amazon to make the cooling fan work. Like I said in the video where I picked up this ST1100, $750 bike, but it ain't a project, okay? Installing a fan switch doesn't count as a project. Now let's go on a trip. It's 7 a.m. and she wobble. <laughs> not a morning person. <laughs> You're not an anything person. <laughs> I'm barely human, baby. <laughs> Reptilian, all right. Here's the thing. It's seven o'clock in the morning. We're busting ass to get going. We're about to take a trip on two unproven motorcycles that combined cost about $1,700. What could possibly go wrong? Hmm, as any great adventure does, it starts with a trip to the stab and grab. All right, baby, let's kick the tires and light the fires. It's time for adventure. All right, baby, let me tell you, when you're pulling onto the highway and achieving ramming speed with the intention of leaving your state, it hit just a little bit different. It hits so good, I'm gonna have to restart Turbo Lover. All right, that's better. Turbo Lover starting over, hitting the highway, heading out of Tampa, me and Shay Lisi on two motorcycles that cost less than a couple months rent. Baby, life is all right. Will they make it? We don't know, but ain't that half the fun. Rob Halford, hell bent for plastic on these two Tupperware glides. Side by side, 90 miles an hour. Turbo lover cheering us on. It's hard to keep the smile off my face as we blast past the last Tampa exit. See you later, y'all. Bears is the no turning back point. Leaving Tampa, leaving the state, let's do it, baby. It's a bad venture. Right as the song ends. 
Perfect. We're just rounded up on 50 miles, which is officially the longest Shaylisi has ever sat in the saddle over Pacific Coast 800. So, I, even though I usually like to stop around 100 miles, we've done 50 miles. She's never in a new helmet. She's got a fully loaded bike that she's never been on for a very long time. I'm going to go ahead and pull over and see how she's doing. Not to mention, like, I've never been on this bike in it for very long either. So, uh, also the longest I've been on this motorcycle. So, I'm going to go ahead and check this thing out too. What's up? I just wanted to stop and do a quick check on you, see how you're feeling, how you're doing. Okay. Hell yeah, for an early morning spin, I dig it. Biker boys, baby. Jay Lisi's all good. My bike's all good. We got good oil. The tires look okay. None of the wheel bearings seem hot. Let's hit the road, all right? Two cool dads, baby. See? Any bike's an adventure bike if you just point it off road, right? Homeboy here on the concourse with the full trailer setup. I love it. Oh, and another. And oh, wait, it's a sprint. I thought it was a Honda ST. No, it's a Triumph Sprint. Still kind of a rare bike. Two fellow dads, just like ourselves, out on a dad venture. I wonder where they're going. I didn't even catch their plates. I don't know if they're going on an adventure or going home. Wait, are these guys not together? Are we just, are there just like four dads meeting up like this on the highway right now? Did I just, did we just spot some rival dads? Are we gonna have to dry swallow a pill in front of them? Are we gonna have to call out that they cook their steaks well done? Shaylisi with her free cheese. We're making our diabolical plan. Free cheese. Um, she said it was for a water bottle, but she's using it for Arby's fries too. The plan it's is, is as follows. Uh, we are going to steal all the free cheese from all the pilots. Once the pilots are desperate for cheese, we'll come back and say, have we got a deal for you? Delicious. Right. Our first fill up, not just for the bikes, but for us too. The bikes are full of gasoline. We're full of free cheese and mystery meats from the pilot with an Arby. She was upset that she goes, there's a pilot with a Wendy's, a pilot with a McDonald's, and you pick the pilot with the Arby's. Something that's always really exciting to me when another part of your body hurts more than another part of your body, so you get excited about the meat pain, so your old pain doesn't hurt as much, you know? Wow. Like uh, that's going to be for your therapist to unpack. <laughs> There's a procedure to this. A delicate balance. Back on the road after doing the premieres with you guys. Something we always take time to do because we love doing premieres. I love hanging out with you guys in the chat. I'm literally not making that up. It just makes putting out videos so much more fun when I get to hang out and talk with everybody together while we're watching it. Well, that's enough dicking around in the wang of America. Let's see if these crappy Hondas can make it out of the state or not. Like I said, I didn't do anything to any of these bikes. Hers cost $1,000, mine cost 750 bucks. I have no idea if they're gonna make it to North Carolina or not. Fingers crossed, baby. Let's do it to it. Maybe that's the longest stretch Shaylisi's ever done without getting off her motorcycle. A little over 100 miles. We could probably squeeze another 30, 40 miles out of that tank on her PC800, but I'm gonna go ahead and pull off here and see how she's doing. Gas stop number two, which means glizzy number two, baby. And I even got Shaylisi over to the dark side. Is that a hot dog? You know what? It's a hot dog shaped yeah. food. It walks like a duck. A duck. If it quacks like a duck, uh, it's a duck, baby. That's a hot dog. No! What is it? Is it not good? I'll be the judge of that. No, it's bad. I like that. Yo, let me tell you, when you're fighting against a press washer, it's a hard life out there busking at the gas station, all right? <laughs> These poor guys are out here struggling. I don't, and I want to know, it's like, did you guys set up your guitar there first? Or did you set up the guitar and then the pressure washer started? Because that looks rough. Are you excited? Your first time? Oh, no. Okay. Well, less excited now. But are you excited? It's your first time crossing a state line on a motorcycle. That's pretty awesome. We'll get you sunglasses at the next gas stop. That's back on the road. Let's do it. Well, I'm not doing that. I just told me to turn right. I'm like, you got me fucked up with someone else. I ain't doing that. Ooh, baby, escape 
from the wang of Erica. We burst forth like the two best sperm in the bunch, baby. And uh, Shay's Milk Toast Pacific Coast over there certainly looking the part. I am super proud of Shay Lisi. Her very first time crossing a state line on a motorcycle. Now, if you don't live in Florida or Texas or any other very large state, that might not be a big deal. But when you live in the middle of Florida, crossing the state line on your motorcycle for the first time and seeing this right here from the back of a bike, this, this that divides Florida and Georgia, it feels pretty cool. And I'll tell you, I'm extra proud of Shay Lisi because not only is she crossing the state line for the first time on her motorcycle, but she's doing it on a bike that she paid a thousand dollars for. Now that's the Shade Tree Army way. Side by side, baby. Dad's on the run. We got Caribbean Queen, Billy Ocean, singing us into North Carolina. Listen up, baby, we're riding two motorcycles on an adventure that costs less than a lot of girls' handbags. <laughs> a freaking thousand dollar bike held together with pink duct tape. <laughs> you ain't gotta have a $40,000 Harley to go on an adventure, baby. Please, the serotonin, please, bird. <laughs> Please take the chip, it'll make her feel so good. I'll, I'll feel so good. It'll make our whole trip if you just dude, take that chip just from her take hand. The chip, dude. There's almost no chip left. I ate the chip. <laughs> <laughs> All right, another gas stop down. You're making time, you're doing good. We ran at this random marathon in the middle of nowhere. Some of this guy pulls up in a truck and goes, I never expect to see you here. And I go, you know what, baby? I never expected to see you here either. I don't even know who you are, but I didn't expect you. Anyway, shout out to Corey. He stopped up here and he said hi to us, man. That was cool. Hell yeah. Look at the Harry Potter sticker in the back. It says, follow the spiders. It's a K&M spider. Hey, take my word for it, it's funny. Dude, this baby's looking like it may need a little more duct tape to hold it together by the time this trip is over. I like your Harry Potter sticker. Here we go. Crossed your first state line on a motorcycle today, and you're about to cross your second. We'll see you later, Georgia. South Carolina, here we go. Somewhere in South Carolina, where we don't know. But I will say, I had to pull the camera out because if I could ever choose to have a Brap Star mobile station, Brap Star on the road, baby, it'd be one of those things right there. I do see him come up for sale every once in a while, but let me tell you, this one right here looks freaking spotless. That thing's spotless, man. That was perfect. Yeah, it looks beautiful. Just chatting with the owner, and he said he just uh, got done taking a 2,000 mile trip with this thing. So not only does he take care of that thing, but he uses it too. I like that. It takes care of him. Oh, let's rock and roll. We're almost, oh, well, not almost there. We're, we're not almost there. We're almost to our stopping point. I don't want to push Shaylisi too hard. So we're doing about 600 miles and we're going to stop in Charlotte. I've only ever ridden through Charlotte. So I'll be honest, I'm pretty excited to stay there for a night. One, maybe two gas stops left. Well, for Shay Lisi anyway. I'm pretty sure this thing has got like a 300 mile range, the SC1100 I found out. It's got a seven and a half gallon gas tank. It has got a much farther range than I would want to stay on a motorcycle without getting off it, that's for sure. I don't want to push Shay Lisi too hard on her very first time on a long trip, very first time crossing state lines on a motorcycle. So we're gonna, we're gonna take it easier. We're doing about 600 miles, which is still a lot for a lot of people, but you know, we're not doing, we're not doing an iron, but her first time our first road trip out all right <laughs> i still am like yeah very first road trip out she's on a thousand dollar bike held together with duct tape i mean that's that's doing it of course you know here i i say that on top of 750 dollars bike no duct tape on this one though but when i say untested i mean it i didn't test anything on either of these bikes like we put a battery in the bc 800 and changed the oil i didn't even change the oil on this thing i just checked the tire pressure and put a fan switch on it and we freaking hit the road if this is not any movie magic like i have a real job i work for a living there's no movie magic here i don't have a production crew like if we break down and that is a very real possibility on these two 30 plus year old motorcycles. Uh, if we break down, we're just broken down. That's it, baby. Fingers crossed. But like I said, I like a bit of excitement with my motorcycle trips, okay? <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do when that butt hurts, man. <laughs> oh, coming into that good scenery, man. Out of Georgia, out of Florida, in South Carolina, and things are starting to get a lot prettier. Ooh. 
A PC 800 doing 100 miles an hour, baby. It's breaking the ton. <laughs> you look like a real adventure biker now with your coffee and your modular helmet. See, you don't need a $35,000 BMW GS to look like an asshole in a white modular helmet drinking your coffee on your motorcycle. You can do it on a $1,000 bike too. Charleston, here we come, baby. Right around the corner, 100 miles to go. Yeah, I went the wrong way. <laughs> Even with my GPS right in front of me, I went the wrong way. Uh, it wouldn't be a shade tree surgeon trip if I didn't get lost. Okay, now that we're going the proper direction, Charleston, here we come. Ooh, Shay's ready to get there too. 100 miles an hour on the Milk Toast Pacific Coast. Who knew it could do it? Holy moly. Dude, Charleston at night's looking amazing. I love it. Dude, downtown Charleston is freaking cool looking. I had no idea it was going to be like this. Of course, I didn't look at any pictures, so I had no idea at all. This place looks super cool. Dude, I like that building. It looks like almost Asian with the little points on it. It looks like something out of Blade Runner. Oh, well, that's our hotel. I'm not sure where to park, though. Well, let's try again. God damn it. This was not the right one. All right, we made it. <laughs> Parking is a little weird here, so we're gonna follow the guy from the hotel in there. Ooh, freaking downtown Charleston is lit. It's Sunday. I know, right? Congratulations. Shay, that's the farthest you've ever ridden the Pacific Coast without dropping it. <laughs> Personal best. I had no idea what the IV was gonna be like when I booked this hotel room. I literally just typed in uh, unique hotels in Charleston, and this is the first one that came up, so I got it. This place is freaking amazing. Here at the Hotel Bar at the Ivy, we got Birdsong is the name of the brewery. Birdsong Brewing uh, Company Rewind Lager, which, what was your name? Lindsay. So Lindsay tells me is a local place. Let me tell you, I always like a local place uh, that makes a lager that isn't hopped to death like an IPA. It actually tastes like beer. I had to ask him if I was allowed to use the lounge over here because uh, it just looks a little too nice for me. It looks like I shouldn't be allowed to use it, but he said have at it. This looks like an excellent place to get absolutely hammered in while Shay looks at her phone. <laughs> which is which is our dynamic when we're out, if you were wondering. It works for me, I don't care at all. But uh, they do close at 10, so we're gonna try out a little, a little bit of downtown Charleston. No. And Shay is currently stealing plants. So I'm not sure what this place is, but just judging from all these things right here, I think that this is the NASCAR Hall of Fame in uh, Charleston, South Carolina. No way, because uh, there's a woman in there. <laughs> so this is, uh, reminds me of Ybor City in Tampa a whole lot in more ways than one. Not just because on even on Sunday you have people stumble drunk in the street and, and hobos everywhere freaking talking crazy, but also right here in the middle you got people doing uh, people doing donuts too, which is also very Tampa. Like Charlotte. I love it. Uh, this feels very familiar. All right, across the street at the Cowbell, they got tater tots, but they're sweet potato tater tots, which I normally hate. Shay loves them. Why do you hate them? Because it's not a regular tater tot, it tastes like candy. All right, it's a burger place. Let's try the burger. It's late night. Okay, it does have stuff on it. I was like, I thought it was just a cheeseburger with nothing on it. Delicious. Wait, take the next I go? One. I'll take the next one. Don't go too fast. It's the next day. Uh, we're feeling a little worse for wear. Not so much because I got super drunk last night. I was too tired to get very drunk. It's always very sad. Uh, we're heading into the mountains today. Breakfast first. Strange fruit. Exciting times. This sounds like drugs. Also, holy crap, dude. Duckworths? 
Can we, you think we can go in and jump in a big, huge pile of money? So we're still walking down the street, find a, trying to find a place called Coco and the Director for breakfast. And yes, uh, we're walking back in the opposite direction because I got us lost. And it's not just on motorcycles. I can get us lost walking too. Definitely got us lost on the whole highway yesterday. Yeah, no, I had to turn around the highway. I, I, I admitted it on camera. I like it whenever something says 2002 AD. This makes me feel like we're in Planet of the Apes or something, some sort of dystopian future. And the fact that this was the building that when it was lit up like at night, it's got those little points on it. So it almost looks a little Asian to me. So it just really reminded me of Blade Runner, which makes the whole 2002 AD thing even cooler. This place is just tragically hip, but Shay, wait till you see this. The lighting <laughs> is phenomenal. But once again, I think she practices eating large pastries in the mirror because you look like you're doing it for a catalog shot. Should, is this what my YouTube channel should be? Yeah, just eating pastries in public. Check out my OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way you're going to be able to eat that one cool. That thing's nuts. Is that a challenge? Yes. It's rare that I've ever met a crust sandwich I didn't like. Delicious. All right, mountains, here we come. Man, I'll tell you, downtown Charlotte, I dig it. It was pretty freaking cool, man. A lot of pubs, reminded me of Ybor City a lot. Uh, you could get street food at night. Like, I don't know, man, I'm a fan. Reminded me of Tampa quite a bit. <laughs> Modular helmet and your coffee. Like I said, you ain't gotta be on a BMW GS to look the part, all right? You can look like a douchebag on a thousand dollar bike too. You know, I don't feel bad about not taking back roads to get out of Florida because I've ridden out of Florida so many freaking times. When I'm escaping the Wang, I take the interstate, baby, and it's time to get on the back roads now. I figure Charlotte's as good a starting point as any to go ahead and forget the highway and hop on the back roads because eh, that's what we're here to do. We did almost 600 miles yesterday and it was all super slab. The 200 miles that we do today are gonna be much more enjoyable. All right, after a very strange gas station experience, we're back on the road. I didn't like that at all. Let's go. You know you're doing bad when a normal gas station like that feels sketchier than the old stab and grab back in Tampa. And it's also a damn shame when you're in line for the bathroom for a half hour and then the guy that comes out, he wasn't even doing drugs in there. I swear to God, that dude, that dude in front of me was fighting for his life at the Circle K bathroom right outside of Charleston, North Carolina. I hope you make it, buddy. Listen up, baby. That sure looks like a mountain to me. Getting closer. That's what I want to see. Closer and closer. It's probably not going to show up on the GoPro at all, but seeing the mountains and the horizon, I, for a Florida boy, that will just never, ever, ever get old. All right, well, we just stopped for uh, <laughs> our last gas stop before we get to Little Switzerland and jump on the Blue Ridge Parkway, and Shay Lisi's bike is pissing all over the place. It's not a real adventure unless one of the bikes break down. <laughs> <laughs> Unless one of the bikes breaks down or one of us breaks down, whichever comes first. You know, I'd stop leaking coolant and it looks like there's still some in there, so I'm gonna call it good. Let's rock and roll. We'll check it in like a thousand miles when we get home. <laughs> you know, when one of your under $1,000 30 plus year old motorcycle starts leaking fluids. You can't be that surprised, but I'm just gonna go ahead and say that the uh, the $750 motorcycle is going fine. That's right, just keep that music turned up. Can't hear the haters. You can't hear all the horrible noises your bike are making. It's it's great. Bike's making a weird noise. Turn up the volume. Old Shea Lisi's Pacific Coast 800 might be leaking coolant, but we're not gonna let that stop us from enjoying the Blue Ridge Parkway, all right? What's a little bit of leaking coolant? You can always fill it back up, right? I just love that Shea Lisi's getting the full Monty on this trip. It wouldn't be the same if there wasn't an issue with one of the bikes, all right? So far, <laughs> the freaking STD 1100, it's doing just fine. I mean, almost boring. It's been so uneventful. Usually I buy a crappy bike because I'm like, man, I hope something exciting happens. But uh, so far, it, uh, it has let me down. Or it, it hasn't let me down. It's let me down because it's not letting me down. No PP. I think you're good. That's where we're going. We're headed up to a place that I wanted to check out last time I was out this way. I just didn't have time when I was heading back from Niagara Falls called Little Switzerland. And I don't know, man, just 
the little anything I'm usually into, little China, little Italy, and little Switzerland in the middle of the mountains. I don't know, man. I got I got to go to a place like that, and it's probably a tourist trap, like so many of these places are. But I don't really care because I'm a tourist, so I don't mind going to a tourist trap. I'm not exactly the most exciting vehicle to be stuck behind on Shaylee's first taste of uh, mountain twisty roads, but probably a safe vehicle to be stuck behind because we're definitely not going <laughs> to exceed any of our limits being behind a big old semi like this on the mountain roads. Or at least you would hope that we don't exceed our limits where a semi can, can make the turn and we can. I'll tell you, I don't even mind riding these roads slow though. It's just so absolutely breathtakingly gorgeous that riding it slow, even being behind a semi like this, it, it just doesn't bother me because it's I don't know, man. It's just the, the zen moment of just kind of flowing through all of this and seeing all this beautiful scenery, scenery that's so foreign to me. You know, you guys who live in the mountains, you see this all the time, and I'm sure someone in the comments is going to go, well, those, those aren't mountains. These are mountains. Well, okay, I get it, but... I live in Florida, all right? I guess maybe it's for, for people who are landlocked or live in a valley in between the mountains or something like that. Seeing the ocean for you is crazy. Seeing the ocean for me, <laughs> I see the ocean almost every day. I know she, at least she's probably dying. She probably wants to stop and pick some of these wildflowers so freaking bad, but <laughs> you ain't stopping on this road. <laughs> oh, hell yeah, dude. That's where it's at. Up and up and up and up we go, baby. Climbing higher. Oh, I love it. It just feels so good. It's so exciting. It, like, builds the excitement when the grade really increases like this. And I got to drop a gear to go up. And you're like, oh, man, this is just exciting. Now we're going somewhere cool. All right. I'm pretty sure Shaylee is comfortable enough on a motorcycle to go past this semi. She's been riding for a long time. But we'll still keep it kind of easy in the mountains here. Bike's already leaking fluids. We don't need to crash it on top of it. Oh, just freaking breathtaking, man. If you live here, maybe you guys who live here can tell me. Do you get tired of this if you live here? Not tired of it, but do you not see it anymore? I don't know. Maybe it's like me with the ocean, like where you just like see it all the time. So I don't see it anymore. Do you ever drive through this and not see it? That seems impossible to me. Oh, my ears are popping. It's still climbing. I love that. I love the climb. The anticipation is just building. Oh, yeah. I feel like we're, we're getting ready for a big reveal here pretty soon. Blue Ridge Parkway ahead. This is what we came for. Man, I love this place. The sense of peacefulness that washes over me just riding down this road feels so good i wouldn't i mean i know people are like oh you have to go slow the speed limit's only like 50 miles an hour and i'm like man i don't even know if i'd want to go any faster than that just the act of just kind of putting through this at a nice peaceful speed oh no the honda honda is growing on me oh my gosh the honda fungus is taking over putting through this at a nice peaceful speed who am i the dad genes are becoming one with my body ah uh, well if becoming one with the dad genes is what it takes to come out and experience this you know what boys i guess i'll take it because i'm really really loving it this just feels good and doing it with my niece doing it with shaylisi and having her experience it for the first time that just doubles the pleasure for me right now i love it little switzerland let's see what this place is all about dude this is talk, talk about dad's jeans this is this is a this is dad jeans central up here oh they got ice cream she'll be stoked about that you're gonna fall over Okay, up here in Little Switzerland, and uh, just uh, saw these people over here on GSs. Even though I've been talking crap about GSs this whole time because they're expensive, this lady is five foot two, so a fellow short rider on an adventure bike. When I say any bike, I like ran up. I'm like, ma'am, how tall are you? <laughs> <laughs> any bike that you go on an adventure on is an adventure bike, but that one could actually go off road, so we could go on some dirt roads. That low GS is really cool. Let me get a step out of the way here. Anyway, we're about 50 miles outside of Asheville, just as I suspected. Shaylisi absolutely adored every mile of the ride up that mountain. And there's even better to come, I promise you. Well, little Switzerland. Oh my God. I don't know how, oh, a bear. <laughs> I don't know how Swiss it is. 
you smoke pot here? Uh, you can have a joint anywhere. They might not like it, but you can do it anywhere. Well, y'all, the pub was closed, unfortunately, not open till dinner. So, Shaylisi won this one. She had to go to the ice cream shop, but luckily, the ice cream shop also has beer on tap. Okay, leaving a little Switzerland. I've had a beer. Shaylisi's had some ice cream. The Pacific Coast is either uh, out of coolant or stopped leaking. So uh, let's hit the road. Leaving little Switzerland, uh, not a lot to see there. Pretty sure little Switzerland isn't a town. Little Switzerland is basically just a hotel and a bar, but that's all right. We still enjoyed ourselves. Shaylisi got ice cream. I got a beer. Life's all right. We're about to go do 50 or 60 very peaceful, breathtaking, amazing miles on the Blue Ridge Parkway. Life ain't bad right now. Whew. Definitely a damn sight easier doing this on this ST1100 than it was on my oh whooped up Raspberry Buffet, my GL1200, my old Goldwing. God, this thing handles like a sport bike compared to the Goldwing. So keeping it easy because Shaylisi's with me and she's actually really good about riding her own ride, so I'm not that worried about her. But still, you know, I want to set a good example. I'm not trying to have... This is, ain't the place to push your boundaries. Like your, your first trip out to the mountains, even though the Blue Ridge Parkway is just a very non-technical, big, easy sweepers. Uh, still, you're not the place you want to go and uh, test yourself, I would say. I'll tell you, I mean, even though this ST1100 so far is very boring, this V4 engine, I am absolutely loving it. This is the first V4 I've ever owned, and I'm, I'm in love with it. I think it's absolutely phenomenal. I just love the way it makes power. You don't even have to take off your helmet if you don't want to. Isn't this fucking insane? I'm also about to take the most peaceful piss of my life right now. <laughs> the those two beers are catching up with me sooner than I thought, okay? No, I'm gonna take the piss off the side of the mountain, of course. Well, they even left a rock for me to take a pee off of. I feel like Rafiki in Lion King. This is great. Ah, <sighs> truly at peace. Oh, oh, yeah. Three knobs overlook. We'll call it four knobs today, boys. Come around the side of that mountain, we'll just never get old. Wow. Could it get any better than this? I mean, I suppose it could. You know, everyone's gonna say that their mountains are better, but give me a break, man. I don't know how much better it could get than this. Oh, I freaking love this so much. Not bad for a couple thousand dollar bikes. <laughs> I've been saying it the whole freaking trip, man. You don't have to have an expensive motorcycle to do something like this. You don't even have to have a medium priced motorcycle. You can do this on top of a motorcycle that costs less than a thousand dollars. One of the reasons I wanted to do this on this ST1100, besides the fact that it was just such a freaking good deal, I couldn't pass it up. Avoid those potholes. The rear suspension is pretty much shot. What do you expect for the, what I paid for the motorcycle? But I wanted to do it on this bike because I've done trips on cheap gold wings. And the thing with those bikes is is not everybody wants a gold wing. Some people want something a little sportier. And this ST1100 is definitely pretty damn sporty, man. The Gonorrhea Glide, the STD1100, just the, the Villages special over here. This is a pretty sporty motorcycle. This V4 engine is so much freaking fun. I mean, no, it's not super fast, but the way it makes power is really, really enjoyable. It handles like a freaking dream. You can still stay in the saddle. Maybe not completely as comfortable as a Goldwing, but let me tell you, it's still pretty damn comfortable. And it's so low to the ground. I mean, Goldwings are really low too, but Shaylisi could actually ride this bike. She tried it. She actually can touch better at five feet tall on the STD 1100 than she can on our Pacific Coast 800, even though the PC 800 is a, a lot lighter than the than this bike is. But I'm just saying, this has a very low seat height. So if you're worried about a, like a, a Goldwing being too big for you or something like that, man, 
th this is the bike for you because you can find these all day long for like $1,500. And Shay's bike, the Pacific Coast 800, if you want something even lighter, a little smaller displacement, a thousand bucks is what she paid for that bike. It's out of freaking control, man. These old touring bikes, specifically these old Japanese touring bikes, are so affordable. They're so cheap and they run so well. Like. I haven't had a single problem with this bike. There, it showed up with a couple problems, like the fan not coming on, but they're, I mean, this whole trip, knock on wood, we're about to reach uh, Asheville, which is our, our destination. Not one thing, nothing, nothing has gone wrong on this bike whatsoever. Just like runs like a top, just the most uneventful as far as motorcycles concerned mo motorcycle trip I've ever been on. Hell, even the first Goldwing I bought, the Raspberry Buffet, when I rode it across the country, it broke down three times. I was able to fix it every single time it was nothing super serious but still dude this baby chugging oh i love when you're like driving here and you can just you see the curve of the mountain and you can see the road up there too where you're going that's just wild to me that'll that could ne that could never get old as I was saying though, what's stopping you? There's nothing stopping you. Hell, even if you have a bike already, everyone wants to wait for their adventure, for their getaway to be perfect. They want every little thing to line up. Let me tell you how many days we took, me and Shaylisi took, for we took three days. So if you normally have two days off and you take one extra day, you take one vacation day or one personal day, we just did this trip. It's gonna end up being about 15, a 1500 mile trip, which is not huge, the longest trip in the world, but you could do, and we could have done it in two days, but we took three days to take things a little easier. There is nothing stopping you from doing this. If you own a motorcycle, or if you only have a little bit of money to spend on a motorcycle, you can take your trip. That's all I want to prove with these videos. You know, it's like, uh, I don't know. Of course, like people enjoying the videos, I really like that. It feels really good. I, I love making YouTube videos, but if anybody takes anything away from this video, all I'm trying to ask you is don't let your own head stop you from taking the adventure. Buy the ticket, take the ride. There should be nothing at all standing in your way. If you can take three days off and you have a couple thousand dollars to spend on a motorcycle, you can do this. Do you guys think I'm rich? Do you think I have all the time off in the world? I'm busy. I'm busy and no, I'm not rich at all. And look at me, I'm out here doing it. I don't care if you're fat, you're tall, you're skinny, you're short. Shaylisi is five feet tall and she's out here. You don't have to have, oh, I need a specially made bike because I'm so short or I'm 5'2 or I'm 5'3, I can't do it. Like, no, you don't. You could buy this bike, five foot tall. If you were five feet tall, you could buy this bike and, and you could do it on this one. Like the old saying goes, don't let perfect stand in the way of good. Take the trip. And the one I've always been fond of, listen up, baby. A diamond with a flaw is still better than a pebble with none. So jump on that bike, take the time off, take the trip. And even if you've only got two days, just take a day trip. Stop waiting to have a week off to take your grand adventure. How far can you get in a day? You could get six or 700 miles in a day. You don't have to plan anything at all. Pick a city, point at a map and pick a city and go. There is absolutely nothing wrong with riding a thousand miles to have one beer and then riding a thousand miles back the next day. I guarantee you there are dudes out there who have more money invested in the sound system on their touring Harley Davidsons than we have in both these bikes who have done less miles on those motorcycles the entire time they've owned them than we've done on these bikes in one month. Just saying, you don't have to have a fancy motorcycle. You don't have to have a nice motorcycle. You just If you got a bike, baby, you can do it. I don't care if it's a scooter, if it's a Grom or what, man. There is nothing stopping you from taking the adventure. Stuff a duffel bag full of a few fresh pairs of underwear and socks and hit the road, baby. What's stopping you? Shaylisi said it perfectly. She's, got, she's gained so much confidence from this trip, not just from crossing multiple state lines, but because she's never done this sort of thing before she's never she's never just jumped off on a motorcycle and taken off she's never done it and now that she's in it and we're almost to Asheville where we're three states away from where we started she's just going like man I feel like I could do this at any point I wanted to I could do this at any time and that's what I want you to feel like take the first step take the first trip pick a city do this for me and tell me how it goes take your weekend if you have two days off in a row pick a city that's 
between 300 and 500 miles away from you. Three to 500 miles. That's easy. That leaves you enough time to get to wherever you're going, have time to look around, have a beer, have a good time, pick a city and go there. Get a cheap hotel room and go there and come back. And you can do that on your two day normal weekend. You do that and next video that comes out, you let me know how it went in the comments, all right? That's, I'm calling that right now. That's the Brap Star Challenge. That's what I wanna see, okay? I wanna see you take that trip because what the hell is stopping you from going? What, your trip has to be perfect? Everything has to line up? All the stars have to align and every little thing has to fall into place? Like, no! It doesn't. Like I said, pack some extra underwear, pack some extra socks, and hit the road. What's stopping you from experiencing this view like I am right now? You know what? If you already own a motorcycle and you have a couple days off a week, uh, you know, not everybody has that luxury, obviously, but if you already have those things, there is nothing stopping you at all. Oh, how cool. Look at this guy out here living life in that vintage vet on the blue ridge parkway i love it man ride them don't hide them baby come on i am so proud of shay Lisi. i mean it takes a lot and she was scared she's on an unknown bike untested i mean she's put a couple thousand miles on it around town but never been on a road trip before she's never been on a mot road motorcycle road trip period let alone a motorcycle road trip on a 30 plus year old motorcycle that costs a thousand dollars you know what i mean it takes guts to head out and do that because let me tell you it's not like i brought my truck you know if she breaks down <laughs> that's, i don't know how we get that bike back but that's what i want to see from all of you too you know what if a 26 year old five foot tall girl can do this you can do this Ugh. How can, if you're watching this video, how could you not? I, I mean, you know why I was like, I have to come back out here and do this again? Rewatching my video of me coming out here and doing this. I just rewatched my video. Me and Arab Honey were sitting down watching it. And I just said, you know what? I, screw it. I got to go back. I got to do this again. <laughs> I, I just, I can't, I can't stop. I can't keep away. It feels so freaking good. I feel so at peace. There's a smile that's making my cheeks hurt right now. Oh my God. Life is good, man. Life is real, real good. Well, thanks for coming along on this feature length journey. It's going to about do it for this episode, guys. I don't normally ask you guys to do this, but I'm going to ask you to do it this time please leave a like on this video. Please share this video with somebody who needs to see it. I'm not making this up. What I really want to see come from this is more people just take the plunge. I, I can't tell you how many people I hear talk about like the trip they would have taken or the trip they're going to take and they build just mountains out of molehills and they never let themselves experience all these things that they say they want to experience because they're just so concerned with making sure that everything's perfect instead of just rolling the dice, setting it and going. Things don't have to be perfect. Things just have to happen. Just go. So share this video, share it with somebody who needs to hear that because that's what I want to see from you guys. Because guess what? I used to be one of those people. I, this, the whole like taking trips thing, this is pretty new to me. I used to be just a, I'm never gonna, I'm not gonna take the trip until everything's perfect, everything's good. And it started with my chopper trip to Barber when I took my, my old chopper, my hardtail chopper, and I rode it to Barber Vintage Festival. And all of a sudden I realized like, I can do this. I can, I can just go. I, I can do these things. Nothing is stopping me. And I want you guys to realize that too. And I want other people to realize that because like, dude, I like motorcycles, I like bike, and I know you guys do too. And I want, I want you guys to experience the things that I've experienced by just letting go and just freaking jumping on the bike and leaving. No plan, don't worry about it, just go somewhere else. Take the first step. Once you rip that band-aid off and you start doing it, trust me, it gets a lot easier. I appreciate you guys so much. Don't forget to like the video, don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you for the return journey. Till next time, y'all, keep it weird.